Hello, uh, this is the presentation for the paper entitled Unsupervised Concept Drift Detection using a student-teacher approach. My name is Vitor Cerqueira and, and I'm from the LIAD Inesc Tech Institute in Porto, Portugal. This is a joint work with Heitor Gomes from University of Waikato in Hamilton, New Zealand and Albert Pife from, also from the University of Waikato and Telecom Paris Tech in Paris, France. So, in this presentation, I'll start by introducing the problem, then I'll uh, go over our methodology for unsupervised concept drift detection, then I'll show some experiments, and then I'll conclude the presentation. So, this work is about concept drift detection. Essentially, concept drift denotes the process in which uh, uh, the distribution of the data changes over time in unforeseen ways. And uh, in, this, uh, in these scenarios, um, predictive models must be able to detect these changes and adapt to them. And one common way to, to do this is to couple predictive models with some change detection mechanisms. So these change detection algorithms uh, monitor the behavior of the predictive models and uh, issue an alarm when they identify some change in this behavior. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, the predictive model adapts, updates its knowledge with some recent information. Um, regarding the change detectors, the typical uh, approach is to monitor the performance of the predictive models over time. For example, in this figure, we track the error, uh, error rate of a model over time. And an alarm is issued when this error rate increases significantly. Um, however, uh, one limitation of this approach is that we assume that uh, labels are available at almost all times, which is not uh, feasible in many real-world scenarios. So we depict this idea as uh, showing here the axis uh, and uh, which are the attributes and the Ys, which are the target labels, which are available at all times. When in fact, um, after some deployment point, uh, so after we train a, a predictive model in, with some training data, uh, or, or we deploy the model and after that, often we only have access to the, to the attributes and not to the, to the labels. So this is, Maybe this may be due to high labeling costs, or the labels are inherently um, come with a with a large delay. And so, in this context, our goal is to detect concept drift in an unsupervised manner. So we assume that after fitting our predictive model and deploying it, no further labels are available uh, after that point. And there are some uh, approaches to solve this problem, uh, mostly based on tracking the output of predictive models. So instead of monitoring the, the, the performance of a model, we monitor the, its output. So in some, uh, for example, in some detection point I, we have a detection or target window right before it, and before this window, we have a reference window. And if these two windows of data uh, are different statistically, then we issue an alarm for regarding some change. Um, so this is one of the most common approaches to, to deal with this <coughs> problem. So um, regarding our approach to to unsupervised concept drift detection, um, our approach is, can be split into two parts. A first part during the training of the models and the second part during deployment. The first part uh, uh, occurs during, during the training of the model. So we have some data stream, we have an initial batch of observations and we train uh, the teacher model which is the, the model we want to deploy in the data stream. 
And then we apply a student-teacher uh, learning paradigm. We use the teacher model to label the, the training instances. And with this data set, with this data set, we train a second model, the student model, um, which is basically designed to mimic the behavior of the teacher model. Yeah, this is a, a common approach in model compression uh, tasks in which we have a large uh, teacher model, like a, a, a large ensemble, and we want to compact it into a small predictive model. In this case, we are not concerned with uh, scalability scenarios. We have just an algorithm such as a random forest and we build a second random forest with the predictions from the first to in order to mimic it, mimic it. And so during the deployment um, uh, step, we have some instance and we pass it to both predictive models. Uh, our main predictive model, the, the T, and the student model. We grab, the, grab their predictions and we measure the, the distance between them. So basically, this uh, is, uh, refers basically to the, to the imitation error of the student model. And essentially, we pass this error to the detector, some detector um, detection mechanism, such as the page inkly test. So instead of uh, monitoring the, the error of the teacher model, since we don't have access to the labels, we monitor the error of the student model, which is basically the error, uh, imitation error. And then uh, concept drift detection um, is uh, carried out in a, in a standard uh, format. And uh, our idea, uh, our hypothesis is that when concept drift occurs, this will cause changes to the to the data distrib distribution, right? And we hypothesize that these changes may dis disrupt the joint behavior between the teacher and the student models. And this may uh, reflect on this imitation loss uh, and hopefully it is captured by the detection mechanism. We carried out some experiments to validate our proposal. First and foremost, we wanted to check whether the, the proposed approach is able to detect concept drift, and then we compared it to a gold standard in which we assume that the labels are available immediately after prediction. Uh, we we, uh, we uh, assume that this approach is not feasible in practice, but is still a good benchmark to compare performance. And we also compared the proposed approach with other unsupervised methods. We used two datasets, uh, one about electricity demand and another one for, uh, regarding forest cover type, which are two uh, benchmark datasets in data stream mining. Um, in terms of learning algorithm, uh, we used an adaptive random forest, both as teacher and student uh, algorithms. And regarding change detectors, we used page Inkly test and uh, Adwin. Uh, in this presentation, I'll sh just show the results with Adwin for simplicity. Um, um, in terms of experimental setup regarding the drift, we used an artificial uh, drift um, scenario. So we have, um, oh, we fit our predictive models using 60% of the observations of the initial observations, which are labeled, and then we deployed the, the model, the models, and we assume that no labels are available after this point. And to inject the, the drift, Basically, we select a random point from the, the testing uh, observations and after that point we shuffle off of the attributes in a, one of, in a randomly chosen class. And um, we evaluate the detectors uh, uh, um, 
according to their ability to react to, the, to this drift and we repeat this process um, a total of 50 times. Um, and uh, so we focus on evaluating the, the reaction of the detectors to the drift. So we measure the mean time between false alarms of the detectors, uh, the mean time to detect the to detection of the drift, and the missed detection rate. So uh, across the 50 repetitions, uh, how often, what's the probability of capturing the drift, and the uh, absolute number of detections uh, on average in each of the, the repet repetitions. So this table shows the results for the electricity data set. Um, so the proposed method um, has a miss detection rate of uh, 0.12, which basically it represents a probability of detection of 88%, um, which is um, worse than the remaining models. But we can also see that uh, our model is generally more reliable. We take longer to, to detect the drift, uh, uh, but we also uh, launch considerably, considerably fewer um, false alarms uh, when compared to the other unsupervised approaches uh, and not actually um, compared to the gold standard, which uses the, the actual performance of the of the predictive models as input. So this, uh, the, these others, other uh, unsupervised approaches, they track the, the output of the models. This one uses the wilcoxon hanksem approach. This one uses, uses the t-test and this one uses the kolmogorov smirnov test. So in general, um, our approach is more conservative, although it actually uh, captures the the drift in with uh, high probability. The results for the forest cover type are uh, quite similar. So we have a, a high probability of detecting drift. Um, and again, uh, we take longer to detect the drift, but we launch considerably fewer uh, false alarms. This one is even better than the gold standard. Um, so these results are encouraging, albeit they are drawn from artificial uh, experiments, which is something we want to, to, to address in future work. So um, in this work, we presented a, a new approach for unsupervised concept drift detection. And uh, so the results are encouraging. And in future work, we want to extend the experimental setup uh, considering additional data sets uh, without any artificial drift and uh, evaluating the, the approach according to explicit measures of predictive performance and trading that off with uh, some measure that uh, quantifies the cost of launching an alarm, additional alarms. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. The code is available in Python. Um, in 